Hello everyone, this is Ryan King and welcome to this Blender tutorial series where I'm going to show you how to create this Christmas tree in Blender. I thought I would break up this tutorial into three parts, so it's going to be a three part tutorial series and that way each part will be a little bit shorter and a little bit easier to follow. So as I'm recording this video, it's about a month till Christmas of 2021, so I thought this would be a really fun tutorial to make. And over the next month, I do plan on making more Christmas tutorials, so if you have any requests for some Christmas theme tutorial ideas, definitely let me know in the comments. So here is the finished result, and what's so cool about this tutorial is that it works really well in both the Cycles render engine and the Eevee render engine. So this is it in Cycles, and here it is in Eevee. So as you can see, it actually looks really quite nice in Blender Eevee as well. Now I will be using Cycles in this tutorial just because Cycles is a little bit more realistic, um, but as you can see, this tutorial also looks really nice in Eevee, so if you'd rather do it in Blender Eevee, you could do that. Now if you'd like to purchase the finished tutorial files, then you can do that over on my Gumroad store in my Patreon page, and that is also a really great way to help support this YouTube channel. Now we will be using a few different textures to get the final result, so over here on Ambient CG I'm going to be using this Bark001, and I'll have the link in the video description, it's a free texture. And I will be downloading the 2K JPEG. And then also over here on Ambient CG I'm going to be downloading this Fabric054, and we will be using this as the cloth that goes around the Christmas tree. And then again, I'll be downloading the 2K JPEG. And then also to get some very nice lighting, I'm going to be using this Artist Workshop HDRI, and this is from polyhaven.com, so it's a free HDRI, and I'm going to be downloading the 1K version and the HDR version, and then I will just download this. And then we're also going to be creating some Christmas presents and putting them around the Christmas tree. So over here on Pixabay, if you just type in Christmas wallpaper, then all these awesome wallpapers will come up. So over here on Pixabay, there's a bunch of different wrapping paper textures to choose from. So you can just go over here and download whichever one you want. Now specifically, the textures that I will be using is this one right here uh, with the red and the trees and the snowflakes. And I'll also be using this one right here. This is a pretty nice one as well. And this one as well with the candy canes and the berries. I think this is very nice too. And the last one that I'll be using is this one here with the flowers and the presents and the candles. All right, so here I am in a new scene in Blender and let's get started. So if you want to see the screencast keys, my screencast keys will be right down here in the corner so you can see what buttons I'm pressing. So I'm first just going to double tap the A key to select everything and then I'll press X and delete it. Now I'm going to be enabling three different Blender add-ons for this tutorial and they're all built into Blender so you don't have to install anything. So to enable these add-ons, just click on edit and then open up the preferences. And then right over here under the add-ons tab, right up here in the search, we're first going to start to type in sapling. So you can just start to type in sapling and we're going to be turning on the add curve sapling tree generator. So this is an amazing add-on that's built into Blender and it will help us to create the base of the tree. So that is the first one. Now the second one is the extra objects. So if you start to type in extra right up here on the search, you can turn on just check mark the add mesh extra objects and this will help us to create the star on top of the tree. And then the last thing that we'll be turning on right over here on the search is the node wrangler. So so you can just check mark the node wrangler add on right there and I'll show you how to use it in the video and we'll be using this when we're doing the node setup to preview different nodes. So we can now just close the user preferences. So to start off I'm going to press shift A and to get to the sapling tree generator you're going to go to curve and then you're going to go all the way down here and you can see it says sapling tree gen. So I'm going to click on that to turn it on and you can see it's added a tree right here. Now if you click on the tree these settings right down here are going to go away. So just make sure you don't select the tree or move it around at all. So I just need to press X to delete it and then I'll press shift A and go to curve and then again click on the sapling tree gen. So just don't click on the tree at all. You can kind of look around your view but if you select anything then these settings right here are going to go away. So I'm going to click on these settings to open it up and we can now use these settings to create the tree. Now right down here you can see that there are some load presets. So if I click on this we actually want to change this to small pine. And already this is looking a lot more like a Christmas tree. Now you can see that all of these branches, they're coming out at the exact
exact same spot. You can see they're all coming out here and here, and I want to make them much more random and organic. So to change that, I'm going to change the branch rings. So I'm going to start to turn the branch rings up, and you can now see that each branch is kind of at a different place. Now you can turn it up to kind of whatever you want. If you kind of start to turn it up pretty high, it starts to just kind of get random. So I'm going to turn the branch rings to 100, and that way they're all just kind of random. And then I also want to make a custom shape, so I'm going to use these values here to make a custom shape. So you can see if I start to change these values, this value right here is kind of changing the size of these branches. So I'm going to make this value a 1 and that way it'll be pretty big. And then this one right here, I can change it and it's going to change the size of a lot of the branches kind of in the middle. So I'm going to change this right here to a point six four and that way these branches are a little bit smaller and then at the top here i want the branches to be much smaller and that way they're going to be bigger down here and then when you go up they're going to get smaller and smaller so these values right here i'm going to change this to a 0 0.01 and then this value right here i'm also going to change to a 0 0.01 and you can see that now the branches right up here are really small and then they slowly get bigger and bigger so now i want to add more branches because there are not very many branches so right up here on the settings if you click on this we have different tabs and then those different things can change the tree so right now we're on geometry but i want to click over on the branch splitting so that we can add more branches now right now the branch splitting only has a level of two and if you turn it down to one you can see now there's no branches there's only the trunk so if i turn it up to two now there's more branches but then if i turn it up to three there's going to be branches on those branches and you can actually turn up even more to like four and now there's going to be small branches on the branches which are on the bigger branches but i don't really want that i'm just going to do three levels and that way there are the branches and then there's a second layer of branches now if you go right down here to the branches this second value right here you can change this and it'll change the amount of branches so i'm going to change this to 200 and then hit enter and you can see now that is starting to look much more like a christmas tree and then i also want there to be more of the secondary branches so this 200 that just added more of the first branches but on this value right here underneath the 200 i'm going to change this to 20 and that's going to add more secondary branches. So now we have a lot of branches and that looks very detailed. Now right down here you can see that the trunk is very small and I do want to make the trunk a bit bigger. So right over here on this trunk height I want to change this to a 0.1 and that way now you can see that the trunk is a bit bigger and there aren't any branches right down there. And that way we'll have a little bit of room for the presents and the cloth around the Christmas tree. Now you can see that the branches are kind of rotating up and I want them to be kind of rotating down more. So right down here on this rotation angle I'm going to go right down here to the third value and I'm going to make this a negative 20 so you can just type in negative 20 and enter and you can see that now all the branches are a little bit more relaxed and they're just kind of going down a little bit all right so that is looking pretty cool but this doesn't have any pine needles so we want to add pine needles to our Christmas tree so to add the needles I'm going to click right here on the branch splitting and I'm going to go right over here to leaves so we can actually add leaves and it's going to add the pine needles so on the leaf shape here, just make sure this is set to rectangle, because if it's set to these other ones, it's going to actually look like leaves, but if it's set to rectangle, it's going to actually look like the pine needles. Now I can click on show leaves, but if I do that, it's going to be a bit laggy for a little while, um, because you can see that the leaves here is at 500, and that's pretty high. So I'm going to just take this value down to like a 20, so that there are not very many leaves, and then I can click on show leaves. So it might just take a moment to load up, but now you can just kind of zoom over here and Remember, don't click on anything or don't move the tree, because if you move the tree, you're going to have to redo these settings. But you can see right here on the edges, there are some pine needles now coming out of the branches. Now on the leaf scale right here, I do want the leaves to be smaller. So I'm going to click on the leaf scale and I'm going to change that to a 0 0.0. 8, 5. And if you wait for that to load up, now you can see that those needles are much smaller. And then right down here, you can see that there is this leaf scale taper, and I want to change this as well. So I'm going to change this value to a 0 0.8. 0 0.8, let's wait for that to load up, and now you can see that they're even smaller. And then right over here on the leaf scale X, I want to change this value to a 0 0.05. Um, and now you can see that they're a bit thicker. And then right here on the leaf scale variation, I also want to change this to a 0 0.05, and that way there'll just be a little bit more variation. All right, so those pine needles look much better now, but there are not very many of them. So the number that I found to work best is 350. So I'm going to change this to 350 and hit enter, and then it will take a moment to load up. Now, if, if this is too laggy, if this is too many needles, you could turn it down. Now, each time I've created the Christmas tree, 
um, the branches are just a little bit different. And so every time it seems like the needles are just a little bit different. So I found that usually around 350 looks pretty good, um, but you could also turn them up a little bit to maybe 400 or maybe down a little bit to 300. Really just play around with the amount of needles until it looks nice. Now I found that this result right here, this looks to be about the best. Now this was about 350. Um, so if you want to just play around with the amount of needles and kind of get it to how you like, um, I don't like it to be too bare because then it just doesn't look very good. But also if I add too many needles that it can start to look kind of puffy and I can't really see the trunk of the tree. So this is what I found to work best. So if you just want to um, play around with your tree and try to get it to look something like this uh, with the pine needles. All right, and that is it. That is it for our Christmas tree model. So I'm now just going to minimize this to hide it. And now I wanna press Control S to save the Blender file. Or you can also click right up here and go File and click on Save As. And I'm just gonna save this on my computer in a folder. I'm just gonna save it as Christmas tree blend, and I'll click on Save As. So there's actually two different objects in this tree. There is a needle object. You can see here are all the needles. And if I tab into edit mode, this is a mesh object. And then if I press H to hide this, we also have this object right here. And this is just the bare tree. And this is actually not a mesh object. If I tab into edit mode, you can see that this object is actually curves. So I'll just press Alt H to unhide this. So we have two different objects. All right, so now I want to set up the lighting and that way we'll have some nice lighting so we can actually preview the tree and then we can do the materials. So to set up the lighting, I'm gonna click right over here on the world properties and we can add in the HDRI. So on this color, I'm gonna click on this right here and then I wanna change this to environment texture. And then I'll click on open to open up the HDRI. And here is the HDRI that I'll be using. So it's the Artist Workshop 1K HDR. So I'll just click on this and then click on open image. So now if you press Z, and move up to go into rendered mode, you can see we have some nice lighting for our Christmas tree. Let's just press Control S again to save. All right, so now let's add a camera and just point the camera at the Christmas tree and then we can add the materials. So I'm gonna press Shift A and I'm gonna go right down here and just add a camera. And then I can just kind of move the camera to where I want it to be, maybe right about here. And then I can press Control Alt Numpad 0 and Control Alt Numpad 0 will hop the camera to where we are. And then also this image is a horizontal one, but I wanna have a a vertical image so I'm going to click right over here on the output properties and we can change the resolution so I have this set to a 2k image but I want to switch these two values so what you can do is you can click on this value and then you can press Control C and that will copy the value and then I also know that this is 1440 so I'm going to click on this and then press Control V to paste that value in there and now it's a square image but then on this top one here I want to type in 1440 and just hit enter um, but if this is at 1080p 1920 by 1080 you can just flip those values really just change this to whatever you want you can also just click and drag here to change the resolution and then you can press G to grab with the camera selected and that is going to move the camera and then if you want to move the camera in and out you can press G and then double tap the Z key so tap the Z key twice and that's going to move in and out so you can just really place this wherever you want um, something like that I want enough room for the star and then I also want some room for the presence so I'm going to leave a little bit extra room on the side there so just something like that and then in the camera view I can press Control B and I can click and drag and I can drag a box around the camera view and that way when we go into render mode you can see that it's only going to render what's in the camera's view of course if you're in the EV render engine then this won't work but in cycles this will be nice and speed up the render times because it's only going to render what the camera can see so now let's create the needle material so I'm going to click on the needle object right here just make sure you have the needle selected and then I'm going to click right over here on the shading tab and then right here I'm going to click on new to add a new material and I can just rename this material to needles so for this needle material, I'm gonna click on the base color and I'm gonna make that a green color, but then I'm going to make it much darker so it's a dark needle color. And then I'll leave everything else at the default. So now if we go into rendered mode, we can see that that's a very nice color for our needles. So now let's do the bark material. So I'm gonna click on the trunk right here to select the tree. Let me just make sure it's selected. And also if you move the tree, you can see that the needles are moving along with the tree. And that is because on default, the needles are parent to the tree. So just select the tree and then I'm going to click on new and I can just call this bark. 
Now earlier on in this tutorial, we did turn on the Node Wrangler add-on. So what I'm going to do is just click on the principled BSDF and then I can press Control Shift T. And when you press Control Shift T, that's going to bring up Blender's file browser and you can now just select all of the textures and it'll automatically set it up for us. So again, link will be in the video description if you'd like to download the same texture that I'm using. So I'm going to be using the Bark 001. So what I did is I just extracted the zip file and then went into the folder. So I'm going to click on the color and then hold down the control key and click on the normal GL and then hold down the control key and click on the roughness. So I just want to select the color, normal and roughness. Uh, we aren't going to be using any of the other ones. And then I'm going to click on principled texture setup. And now that we did that, you can see that Blender has automatically set up all the textures for us because we use the node wrangler feature with control shift T. So it set up all the textures for us. And so we have the base color, roughness and normal. So let's just go down into the material preview. So I'm going to press Z and move my mouse down to go into the material preview. Now, if you zoom up here close to the tree, you can see that the bark is not placed on the tree very well. And so I'm going to be using a easy texturing method, which will allow us to not use UVs. So to set this up, I'm going to take the object and I'm going to plug that into the vector on the mapping. And then what I'm going to do on all of these image textures is I'm going to change this flat to box. So let's just go do that flat to box and flat to box and they all need to be exactly the same so change all of them to box and then the blend value right here I'm going to change that to 0.2 and that is going to blend the edges where the seams are so I'll change the blend value to 0.2 on all of these change it to 0.2 and now if you look around on the tree you can see that it's very nicely placed the bark all around the tree now it is a little bit big and I want to make it a little bit smaller so I want to change the scale value right here on the mapping so I can actually click and then drag down and then I can let go and that way we can change all of the values at the same time so I want to change the value to 2 and then hit enter and now you can see that it's double the size so if you look around here you can see that's now very nice and if we go into rendered mode it looks quite nice on our tree so that is looking very good all right so we are almost done with the first part of the tutorial series but I do just want to add a light right up here and kind of shine it down on the tree so I'm gonna go right back over here to the layout so we are back in the layout and then I want to press shift a and I'm gonna go right over here to light and I'm gonna add the area light so we're gonna use the area light to light up our tree so I can just press G to grab bring that over and I'll press R to rotate and we want to point the area light right at our tree just like that um, and maybe rotate that over a little bit, just like that. All right, so now if I click right over here, we can go to the object data properties and we can change the brightness of the light. So I'm just gonna go up into rendered mode just so we can see how that's looking. And then on the power here, I'm gonna make that pretty high to like a 300. Let's see how that's looking. Let's actually try a thousand because I do want it to be pretty bright and that is looking much better. So now you can see that that light is nicely lighting up the tree. And then I do wanna change the shape of it because right now it's just a square. So right over here I want to change the shape from square to rectangle and then what I can do is on the Y value I can click and drag and I can make that much longer and that way it's going to light up more of the tree so I can now just go into rendered mode see how that's looking maybe move it a little bit closer um, and also if you wanted to you could kind of rotate it more on the side so that there's a little bit more contrast so some of the tree is in the light and a little bit of the tree is more in shadow all right there we go that is looking very good so I'm just gonna press Control S to save and this is gonna wrap it up for part one of the tutorial series. So in part two we're going to be adding the background and we're also going to be creating some Christmas lights and then we'll be wrapping the Christmas lights around the tree. And then we're also going to be creating the star and putting the star on top of the Christmas tree. So thank you for watching and I hope you've been enjoying this so far and if you want to go ahead and watch part two I will throw part two right up there on the end screen and the link will also be in the video description. So I'll be uploading one part each day of the tutorial series so once it's uploaded you'll see it right there on the end screen. So thank you for watching and I hope to see you in part two.